Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is born. Sing it one more time. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Would you stand with me this morning and let's sing, uh, let's sing this next song. I believe... Um, uh, beautiful, beautiful star. Okay, sing this with me. <clears throat> oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone. Guiding the wise men on their way Unto the place where Jesus lay Beautiful star of Bethlehem Shine on Oh beautiful star of Bethlehem Shine upon us until the glow redawns. It's the light to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of light, guiding the pilgrims through the night. Over the mountains till the break of dawn. And to the light of perfect day, it will give out a lovely ray. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem. Shine upon us until the glow redawn. Give us the light to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of rest for the redeemed, the good and the blessed. Yonder in glory when the crown is won. For Jesus is now that star divine. Brighter and brighter he will shine. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem. Shine upon us until the glow redawn. This the light to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine. Oh, sing it one more time, would you? Hallelujah. Oh, beautiful star of 
Bethlehem shine upon us until the glory dawns. Give us the light to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. What's the next one? What's the next one? Oh, come let us adore him. Sing this with me. Amen. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord. For he alone is worthy. For you alone are worthy. For you alone are worthy. Christ the Lord. Oh, come let us adore him oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him christ the lord will give you all the glory will give you all the glory will give you all the glory christ the lord oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him christ the lord we'll praise your name forever we'll praise your name forever We'll praise your name forever, Christ the Lord. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him Christ the Lord would you see how loud you can do that today amen Emmanuel in fact this is what I'm preaching on this morning right here Emmanuel God with us Amen. Name is called Emmanuel. God in us, revealed in us. His name is called. Amen. You will. I'll sing it real loud this morning. Amen. You will. Amen. You will. His 
his name is called Emmanuel God in us revealed in us his name is called Emmanuel oh sing it again Emmanuel, Emmanuel, his name is called Emmanuel, God in us. His name is called Emmanuel. Would you do that one time without music? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. His name is called. Emmanuel, God in us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel. Turn to the person near you this morning and say he's with us. You can back off of that just a little bit, Brother Danny. Let's sing one more. Let's sing one more. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. Heaven and nature sing, heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness. Wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, and wonders of his love. Give him loud praise this morning, would you please? Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. But before you're seated, do something for me. Go around a few people and just tell them you love them this morning. Would you do that? Just go to a few people and say, I love you today. Would you do that? Emmanuel, Emmanuel, his name is called Emmanuel. in us, revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel. It's been a joy over the last few weeks for Kim and her husband to be with us and uh, uh, she's going to sing a special for us this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Any praise yes, the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, 
we, some of them we met first time, but you know, you born again Christian. We are brother and sister. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, we are. Amen. Pray, I can go, but I am sure. Amen. Yes, there is one day. My God is will. I can feel him. The way my God is with yes, he is well in my soul. My God is with oh, he has watched me home. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes. My God is with I can't in my, my soul. soul, I cannot tell just how I feel when Jesus took my sins away, but since that day, yes, since that hour, God has been with I can be yes. holy power. Yes. My God is real. He's, He's real in my soul. soul. My God is real. Oh, he has washed and made me whole. His love for me. In my soul, oh, my God is with me. He's well in my soul. My God yes. is with oh, me. He has washed me whole. Oh, he's love for me. Yes, it's like pure gold. Hallelujah. My God is. Feel him in my soul. Amen. Give God praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. How many know he's real this morning? No doubt about it, he's real. How do you know? Because he lives in my soul. Amen. 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 Good job. Amen. God is real. He's, he's real in this place today too, isn't he? Amen. And I love him with all of my heart. Well, our children can be dismissed this morning. Let me say, isn't it good to see Everett back this morning? We've been missing Everett. Everett's been so sick with, uh, had the flu and was so sick with that flu. But I'm so glad to see Everett back here this morning and, uh, and, uh, they're getting ready for our Christmas play next Sunday, and you don't want to miss that. How many remembers last year's? I bet you there's everybody can remember one little boy last year that said his part and then said amen, amen. So, and Collier, boy, Collier's a mess, isn't he? He, uh, he is a mess. If you have a chance, go on Yogi and Barbara's Facebook page. And see him Friday night as the little drummer boy and had his angel costume on. So, so that was, um, we had a good time. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want you to turn to the book of Matthew this morning, the book of Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. You know, Christmas, it's kind of a, People think it's easy during the holidays for the pastor because he just knows what to preach. But I always try to find a fresh word from God. And, uh, and I believe that I have that for us today. God is so good. 
Uh, would you stand with me for the reading of the word? Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name, say it with me, Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. Father in heaven, I love you today, and I thank you that you are real, and that you're here this morning. And Lord, I cannot do this without you. There's no way that I can make it without you. I, I can't breathe without you. I can't do anything without you. And so today, Father, I thank you for that anointing that makes it all different and effective. And I pray that before we leave here today, we'll understand that you are with us. You were with us before the manger scene. You've always been with us. And God, I give you praise and I give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to try it one more time. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. His name is called Emmanuel. God in us. Revealed in us, his name is called Emmanuel. You know, there are a lot of names found in the scripture that have been given to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's called the bread of life. The captain of, our, captain of our salvation. He's called the Good Shepherd. He's called the Redeemer. In Isaiah 9, I preached it a few weeks ago in verse 6, says that his name shall be called Wonderful and Counselor and the Mighty God and the Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. All the names of Jesus are precious because they all tell us something special about him. But perhaps one of the most special names that's given to him is this name, Emmanuel. Amen. Emmanuel, which means interpreted God with us. Amen. You see, God came to be with us at Bethlehem. Amen. God was with us when he sent his son into the world. It is the name that God was with us, and it is by Emmanuel that helps us to know that Jesus was no ordinary baby. Amen. The Bible teaches us that he was God clothed in human flesh. Amen. The baby who laid in the manger was God with us. The baby that grew up to be a boy was God in the flesh. No doubt you remember that incident when Jesus was only about 12 years old and his parents couldn't find him. And finally they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the religious experts, both having them, hearing them, and asking them questions. Now I don't know about you, but uh, Mary and Joseph must have been better than me because I'd have wore Jesus out in the temple. I'd have probably dusted his backside in the temple when I couldn't find him and got away. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I, I might have dusted his backside because that's a scary thing to lose a baby or a child. You don't know where your little boy's at. And so uh, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if they, they might have done that. I don't know it because uh, uh, you know how he responds? Does anybody remember uh, how he responds, and they, that they were astonished at his answers. And when Mary Joseph questioned him about what he's doing, Emmanuel, God with us, now he's still God with us, he said, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? And I probably said, don't you know I need to be about my, my business? Let's go to the woodshed, amen. But he says, 
Emmanuel's with us in the temple, that little boy. It was God with us when our Lord began his public ministry. On the day that he was baptized by John, the Bible says that the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven that said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. It was God with us when Jesus went to the cross. The Apostle Paul writes in Philippians 2 and 6, Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So God was with us at Bethlehem, but how many know that God was with us even before Amen. Bethlehem? God was with us even before. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen, now I want you to get this, has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Amen. God chose us in Christ before the world was even formed. Amen. The Bible said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How far back in the beginning actually was that uh, nobody knows. I, I don't know. But when God created the heaven and the earth, but we know, know that before he created the world or even made the first man or the first woman, he already had a plan in place. Hallelujah, he already had a plan in place so you and I would not have to spend eternity in a place called hell. You know, uh, God did choose us. Exactly what that means, that God chose us, has kind of really been a mystery through the centuries in, of, of, of Christianity. Some believe that God chose who he would save. Some believe that they would choose particular individuals to save them. In fact, some of your, uh, there's some old hard shell people that believe there's no need even doing missionary work. They won't even do missionary work because they believe that God's already got chosen who he's going to save. That's not what that means at all. That's not what that means at all. I do believe that the scripture is so amazing that it does teach us the who, but I want to talk to you about both the who and the how of salvation this morning. So who did he choose? Said he chose us before the foundation of the world. So uh, did God just choose uh, one individual or a few individuals? The angel said to the shepherds, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all. My goodness. Shall be to all people. The Bible also says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all, hallelujah, that all should come to repentance. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And those include all people, whosoever will, even the lowliest. The Bible said in Luke 2 and 11, for unto you this day, a common to the lowly shepherds is born this day, in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, and you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Amen. Hallelujah. Not only that, but God's choice for his son, not only did he choose everybody, 
Not only did he choose everybody that would come to him, but God's choice for his son to be born in a stable tells us that God is offering salvation to whosoever will. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible closes with these words. Whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. Hallelujah. So one of the truths about God's plan of salvation that makes it so great is the fact that it's for every individual in the world. It's not offered to a select few or, uh, you know, we almost live in the day that these TV preachers will try to make you feel if you're not a certain group. I heard and read about one other day, which is a false liar. He said, if you're not rich, then you've got sin in your life. That's what he said. He said, if you're not rich, you've got sin in your life. Well, uh, well I, beg, I beg to differ with him and his big jets. Because if that was a, if that was a situation, I'd be lost today without God. And you would be lost. And how can you tell that to our missionaries sitting in foreign countries Amen. that don't have a bite of food to eat this morning or a place to worship or a place that they can even call home? Aren't you glad this morning that the whosoever is for whoever will call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Amen. That man's going to keep richer and get, keep, keep getting richer and richer. Yeah. I got some news for him. The Bible said it's, it's hard for a rich man. Come on, brother. Right. I hate to reveal the word to him, but it's, the Bible said that it's hard for a rich man to even make it to heaven. Amen. There be rich men that make it. But what's the, 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 the problem with being rich is a lot of times they get rich and they don't see no need for Jesus. They don't need anything. They're rich. But they'll stand before him one day and find out that they needed Jesus all the time. That plan that I talked about is made so clear in the Bible. I've already told you about John 3, 16, but Revelation 22 and 17, and the Bible said, and the Spirit and the bride say, come. Amen. And let him that hear us say, come. Amen. And let him that a thirst come. Amen. And whosoever will, my goodness, take of the water of life freely. Amen. John 10 and 9, I am the door by me if any man enter in. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. Hallelujah. Is there any whosoever's in the building today? Hallelujah. You see, when Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for our sin, he was dying for all of us. Amen, Hebrews 2 and 9, the Bible said, But we see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 5 and 8, the Bible said, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. You see, I'm glad to report to you this morning that regardless of where your path might have taken you in life, or regardless of where, what you may have done in your past, that God's plan of salvation is open for everybody to come today. Hallelujah. The Bible said in John 6 and 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and in him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Some of the younger people this morning that might be listening to me might not have ever heard of a man named Steve McQueen. Has anybody ever heard of Steve McQueen? I didn't know this story, but Steve McQueen, he was a 
top-selling actress who had a life, who, was, who had led a life uh, and uh, tough as he was portrayed on the screen. He had success, and that success had filled his life until alcohol and a failed marriage left him empty. In his despair, he attended a crusade by, held by one of Billy Graham's associates. And that night, McQueen made a profession of faith and requested an opportunity to speak with Billy Graham. A connecting flight in Los Angeles allowed Dr. Graham to spend a couple of hours with Mr. McQueen in the actor's limousine. The great evangelist shared numerous scriptures in, in his quest to give spiritual hope and confidence. They said that Steve McQueen struggled with the thought of God giving eternal life to a man who had such a checkered past. But in Titus chapter 1, Steve McQueen found his hope. It said in the hope of eternal life, which that God, that God cannot lie, promise before the world began. And he requested that Billy Graham write that down, that verse down. But Billy Graham actually handed him his Bible that night. Later, Steve McQueen died in Mexico. And while seeking experimental treatment for his terminal cancer, he passed into eternal life with the Bible opened of Titus chapter 1 and his finger resting on verse 2. Can I tell you this morning, it don't matter what your past has been like. It don't matter how far out in sin you have been. It don't matter how ugly and nasty you think you are. How many are glad that God promised eternal life Amen. to whosoever? He's Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I tell somebody today? We got a large audience. You may not know this, but all over the world this morning, people will be watching this sometime today or tomorrow. We're getting a lot of comments from other nations and other places of people who watch the service. And I felt like telling somebody this morning, you don't have to fear that salvation won't work for you. If you come to Jesus by faith, he will save your soul. If he could save me or save other people in this room, then you don't have anything to fear. Remember, you have to remember salvation is not for good people. The Bible said, I've not come to call the righteous, but I've called sinners to repentance. Hallelujah. 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 And of course, the Bible says, there is none that doeth good. No, not one. Amen. Not a, now listen to me. There's not going to be a single person in eternity who will say this. I tried to come to God. I tried to believe in Jesus, but he would not save my soul. Amen. There's not one person going to be able to utter those words that he could not save me. Because the fact is, he can and he will save anybody. I said save anybody who calls upon his name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So how? Not only who, but how? God has not only chosen the who, which is everybody, but how. I want you to look at Paul's words in the book of Ephesians. According as he has chosen us in him. Actually, Scripture teaches us that God did choose us. He chose all of us. When Jesus was born in harmony with his perfect timetable, in Galatians 4 and 4, the Bible said, But when the fullness of time was come, 
that God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law. How did he do it? God sent his son at the perfect time. God, hallelujah, how Jesus would be born. It was the how for us to be saved. In Matthew 1 and 23, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Can I tell you how that he saved us? That Jesus was born by the Virgin Mary, conceived of the Holy Ghost. If you cannot believe that, you might as well throw the rest of the book away. Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. It had to be that way for us to be saved. Where Jesus was born, in Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, and chose why Jesus would be born in Luke chapter 2 and verse 11, because we needed a Savior. For unto you it's born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Somebody give him praise this morning of the how. He did it. But here's the biggie. Here's the biggie. Yes, God chose us before the foundation of the world. And all the how that he did it, the manger, the virgin birth. But here's the biggie. We've got to choose him. God chose for the world to be saved through the death of his son. But in order to be saved, the world must choose him. The Bible said in John chapter 1 and verse 12, But as many as received him, to him gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I got to thinking about our choices in life. Everything that God has offered, everything that he did, before the foundations of the world. But yet he, ha he still had to put this in the Bible that I'm fixing to share with you because he don't force that choice upon you. Jesus always seemed to classify people in two categories. He taught that there are two roads of life. The broad road and the narrow road. He said there are two destinies in life. He did not give a third alternative. He did not give a middle of the road. He said that you're either on one road or you're on the other road. There's no path in the middle of the two roads. He said, enter by the narrow gate... For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate and straight is the way that leads to everlasting life. And few, that ought to make us cringe. And few there be that find it. So this morning, you cannot be neutral about eternal life. But a lot of people try to be. They try to ride the middle of the road, but there is no middle of the road. Jesus said it's one or the other. He said if you're not on the narrow road that leads to everlasting life, you must be on the broad road that leads to destruction. Every person's on some road. Everybody's on one of those roads. Can I ask you this morning, what road are you on? The broad road or the narrow road? One leads to destruction and hell. The other leads to a life full of life here and eventually the life to come in heaven. 
This morning, I want to tell you that if you don't know which road that you're on, I'd make sure that I was on the road that I need to be on. This really got me when I was studying it about again. Notice the broad road is a wide road. In other words, you can enter the wide gate and carry with you all of your sins. You can carry your selfishness and your prejudice and your hate and your lust and your intolerance and your bigotry. There are no restrictions on that road. Do what you want to on that road. That's why this world is headed to hell in a handbasket. Because they're just living life like they want to live. They're having a party. They're having fun. Because there's no restrictions on this road. That's an easy, you know, it's an easy road. I mean, if you want to go down this road, you don't have to be committed to nothing. You don't even have to be committed to your marriage on this road. You can live up, shack up, doing anything you want to on this road. The extremes of humanity are on this road. There's the immoral and the dictators and the murderers are on that road. But here's the sad truth. There are also some moral people and even church people on that road. The Bible said, many will say to me that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many wonders, works in your name. Then he said, I'll declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. They were on the broad road all along. And all those people who tried to keep one foot in the world and one foot in the heavenly. Those who tried to ride both roads, all those people are really on the broad road. In the sight of Christ. My goodness. I'm telling you it's time for preachers. To preach this fact. If you're going to live for God. If you're going to serve God. You got to be all in. Or all nothing. You got to choose that narrow road. That's not the easiest road. You have to watch your steps on this road. Amen. Amen. But can I give you some good news? The Bible said that the steps of a good man or a good woman are ordered by the Lord. And you might say, well, pastor, I can't make it on that narrow road. Yes, you can make it as long as you don't get your eyes on the people on the broad road and and you don't look at all those people. If you'll fix your eyes on Jesus and look full in his wonderful face, I'm telling you that everybody in this place and under the sound of my voice can make it on that narrow road that leads to a place called heaven. Hallelujah. So we got to choose it. Amen. Amen. You better hurry up. I kid Richard a lot. He's a good driver. He really is. I rode to Atlanta with him. And I made it back. But he did scare me to death one day. At one moment in time. In one time in history. We were driving through Atlanta. And all vehicles, my truck. And we're going, and you know, you get to some of them places, you got to make your decision which way to go. Yeah. Right. Well, we got really close. We really, didn't we, Richard? We really got close. <laughs> we, we got closer than I wanted to get. <laughs> and we got to make a decision. He's got to make it real quick. And all of a sudden, he realizes which one he's got to take. <laughs> Here we go over. And finally made it into the right road. And, and I got saved that morning and that day. And, and uh, Amen. Come to Jesus, huh? we made it. 
We made it just in time. Can I tell you this morning, you're about right there. Amen, brother. And if you don't make a decision quick to get off that road that you're not supposed to be on and on the road that you're supposed to be on, Patrick, we don't have long to make sure we're on that right road because just any day now, it's all going to come to us. It ain't, it ain't going to come to a screeching halt. You're just going to keep on the road. Amen. Whichever road you're on, you're just going to keep on it. Amen. And it's going to lead you somewhere. Amen. It's going to lead you somewhere. Yeah. It's either going to lead you to a place called heaven. Yeah. Or you're just going to keep on going. Amen. And you're going to spend eternity in a devil's hell. Yeah. My goodness. It's a choice. The broad road is also a crowded road. Yeah, it is. Jesus said there are many who go in by it. Amen. I think one of the greatest sins is conformity. Amen. We always hear everybody else is doing it. Boy, there's a lot of people doing it, aren't they? Amen. There's a lot of people doing it. Amen. Wow. And I'm afraid that's how a lot of the church world has took it. Well, so many people in the church are doing it, so I might as well do it. There's a lot of, a lot of Christians today who are social drinking because they were lied to Amen, brother. There you go. That's right. by preachers on TV that were doing it. They're social drinking, so, you know, if the preacher up there on TV says I can do it, I might as well conform to it. Amen. I can do it too. Everybody else is doing it. Amen. It's what young people hear all the time. Yeah, That's why they end up pregnant. Amen. Because all the other girls are doing it. Amen, Help me a minute. Amen. You know what I tell young girls and young ladies? When a young man looks at them and says, let's do it. Because everybody else is doing it. I tell them to look at them and say, well, if everybody else is doing it, it won't be hard for you to find somebody else to do it with, will it? Amen. 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 But conformity. People want to conform to this world. They want to just be just like the world. My goodness. I've got to quit. But everybody's doing it. No other reason except everybody's doing it. Conformity. Nobody has the moral courage anymore to stand alone. Nobody has that moral courage. Amen. Him, Amen. 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 You got to make that choice. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I love it. I, I picked on him while ago and I kind of pick on him again. You know, there's a lot of people that won't even conform to the Word of God so much and the things of God that conform to the world that it won't even give their testimony Amen. out in the world. I make it a point, Richard. Every time I go to and my, I'm in line. I'm in line at uh, Publix. I don't know a very few times that I've been in that store. I can grant you 90% plus that I went through the line and I was being checked out and Richard wasn't there. And I'd say, do you know Richard Shower? And they say, yeah. I said, I'm talking about that little short gray-headed man that works here. <laughs> then they know who it is. And I say, ain't he a mess? And now just began to tell me about the things of Richard. Amen. Of how that Richard is always happy and always a hard worker and telling people about the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me tell you, I'm not conformed to this world. Amen. I'm only passing through. On, I'm only passing through. And it's time that we really make the choice Amen. that I'm on this narrow road. Word, word. And I've got to tell everybody yes, that I can. You don't have to get off this road to tell people. Stay on this road. They're all around you. Amen. It's a crowded road over there. Amen. Just tell everybody about this man called Jesus. Amen. So Emmanuel is here with us today. 
And you can serve him. Amen. Amen. Come on, Sister Shirley, would you? Amen. Tonight we're going to continue this message about that not only is God with us in Bethlehem and before the world was even formed, how many are glad that God will continue to be with us throughout all eternity? Stand with me this morning, would you? Amen. I'm so glad he found me. In love he found me. Put his arms all around me. And he led me to the shelter. And now I'm one of his own. And all oh, the joy of knowing with hearts are glowing. Someday I'm going to my home, home in glory. Gonna walk on streets paved with gold. I am glad he found me. Put his arms all around me. Does anybody remember the day that you chose him? You chose him. I said you chose him. He chose you. Whosoever. Whosoever. Why don't people want to choose Jesus? Why do they turn him away? I can't comprehend that. But we have a choice today that we can choose him. Father in heaven, I ask you this morning to search the hearts of people here today. That if there's somebody here today that, that doesn't know you, they're on that broad way. They've been trying to maybe live right sometimes and live bad other times. But God, it don't work. They must surrender their life to you. They must make a choice that they're going to serve Emmanuel, God with us. Would you bow your heads this morning and nobody looking around? Is there anybody this morning that just might lift up your hand and say, Pastor Gann, I know that I'm on that broad road. I know that there's no other way. And I've, I've been on that broad road. I've been on that broad road. And I've been doing my own thing and living my own life. Doing my own sins and uh, knowing where this road's going to lead me. But this morning, I want to choose Jesus. And I want to get on the right road that leads to everlasting life. Would you slip your hand up? Would you just slip your hand up? Yes, Pastor. I want to get on the right road. I don't want to keep on this road that's going to lead me to hell. I want to get on the right road that leads to everlasting life. I do want to make that choice today. Would you slip your hand up? You slipping your hand up could change so many people's lives besides yours because you'll become a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. And they will know they'll want what you've got. When they see you on the right road, would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, Pastor, please pray for me. Please pray for me. Yes, God sees those hands. Is there somebody else this morning? Is there somebody else this morning? Pastor Gann, I, I don't want to go down that road. I'm tired of that road. I want to live for Jesus. Would you slip your hand up? Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Don't let the enemy talk you out of it. Don't let the enemy talk you out of it. He'll lie to you and tell you you can't make it on the other road. But yes, you can. God made a way through his son, Jesus Christ. Would you slip your hand up this morning? Anybody else? Anyone else? Would everybody meet me up front this morning? Everybody meet me up front.
We're missing a lot of people today. Missing a lot of people today. You don't have a long time to choose. You got to make a choice quick. You got to make it quick because you're fixing to head off in one direction. Going in one of them. There ain't no, there ain't no three. There ain't, there ain't no three ways. Ain't There's only one way that leads to Christ and it's on the narrow road that leads to everlasting life. Does anybody remember the day that you chose that, that narrow road? Boy, it's been real easy since then, hasn't it? Just been the easiest thing in the world? No, not really. There's a battle being warged against the saints of God. And it's not, it's only by the grace of God and the mercy of God that we're able to stay on this road. Amen. There's been a few times, Brother Sam, I've almost stumbled off that road. But by the grace of God and the mercy of God, when I cried out for help, he pulled me right back on and I began to walk that straight and narrow way again. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I plead with you, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, my goodness. When you read that part right there that said few, there be that find it. Few that be there that find it. So much as so many of the world, so many of our families are staying on that road. No matter what, they're just going to stay on it. They love it too much. But God helped them to make a choice quick to get off that broad road that leads to destruction. That leads to destruction. My goodness. You might say, well, Pastor, why do you beg people so much? Because when you see people headed for destruction, when you see people that's actually headed for destruction, I'll do anything I can to get them to get on this road that I'm on. Let me ask you, Daisy, if you saw Everett today come out of Children's Church, and he walked out of Children's Church, nobody was watching him, and he was headed for Harrison Pike as hard as he would go, what would you do? You'd start screaming. Everett, don't get on that road. Amen, brother. That's right. Don't get on that road, Everett. You'll die on that road. You'd be tearing up jacks. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You'd be screaming at other people, catch my baby. Well, we see people headed for destruction. We see them headed for that place called hell. And sometimes we stand with our arms folded like, you don't need to go there. Preachers get up and read a little sermon and pat them on the back. But we all need to be screaming, don't get on that road. Get off that road, you're going to die. Has anybody got any family members? You need to scream that to the top of your voice. Get out, no, 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 get on this road. Would you pray for him right now? Would you pray for him right now? God, help them to make that choice before it's ever too late. Help them to make that choice. Touch Michelle today, God. Strengthen her to stay on this narrow road that leads to everlasting life. And God, I will praise you. And I will glorify your name. 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 In the name of Jesus. 
the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Does anybody need special prayer today? I got to say this. I get so tired. This is pretty plain put. But I, I get so tired of hearing people say, well, I can't wait to see my loved ones in heaven. And they don't even live on the right road that gets to heaven. They're always saying, I can't wait to see my daddy. I can't wait to see my mama. But you don't ever see him in church. You don't ever see him serving God. Amen. If you're going to get to that place where they're at, you're going to have to be on the same road that they were in to get to that place that they were at. We've got to serve him with all of our heart.